A scientist in his laboratory is not a mere technician. He's also a child confronting natural phenomena that impress him as though they were fairy tales. Marie Curie. From the National Institute for Interdisciplinary Science and Technology in Thiruvananthapuram in India, our next laureate has embraced that sense of wonder in the field of materials chemistry, leading to the development of new classes of materials. To announce the winner for the Infosys Prize for Physical Sciences, it is my pleasure to introduce the jury chair, Professor Srinivas Kulkarni. Professor Kulkarni is John D. and Catherine T. MacArthur Professor of Astronomy and Planetary Science at the California Institute of Technology. Professor Kulkarni's primary interests are the study of compact objects and the search for extrasolar planets through interferometric and adaptive techniques. He's a recipient of many awards. He was elected a Fellow of the American Academy of Arts and Sciences in 1994, a Fellow of the Royal Society of London in 2001, and of the National Academy of Sciences in 2003. Ladies and gentlemen, Professor Srinivas Kulkarni. The Infosys Prize in Physical Sciences covers the following subjects, physics, chemistry, geology, and astronomy. As you can see, this covers a rather large territory, and consequently, our panel has to work very, very hard to make a decision. The jury panel consists of Professor T.V. Ramakrishnan, Professor Emeritus, Indian Institute of Science, FRS, Professor Ramesh Narayan, Professor at Harvard, FRS, Professor Govardhan Mehta, retired as a director of Indian Institute of Science, FRS. Uh, Harry Gray, who's a polymath chemist at, the Cal at California Institute of Technology. So now let me uh, proceed by reading the citation for this year's winner. The Infosys Prize for year two 2012 for physical sciences is awarded to Dr. Ayappan Pillai Ajay Ghosh from the National Institute for Interdisciplinary Science and Technology, Tiruvanthapuram, for his pioneering development of methods for the construction of supramolecular functional materials, which can be employed as components in organic electronic devices and in powerful substance selective optical sensing and imaging. <clears throat> so let me give a little bit of brief background. Um, the field of supramolecule chemistry lies at the interface of biology and chemistry. The early history of chemistry of the sort that we all learned in school and college, it was primarily connected to understanding molecules, their physical structure, their properties, and how to synthesize them. Supramolecular chemistry is understanding larger chemical systems, that is chemical system composed of discrete number of molecules or molecular subunits. In such systems, the forces that hold the molecular subunits are weak compared to the forces that hold the molecule internally. There are several types of such forces, and I'm sure all of you will remember your eighth grade science uh, class at this point if I tell you that one of these forces is like Van der Waals force. Um, why this is important is because as you want to understand, especially biological systems, uh, it is really all about supramolecular chemistry. Uh, for, for this sort of chemistry, self-assembly, the way these molecular subunits hook up with each other, um, and interlocked structure, that is only a certain kind of subunits match with other kind of subunits, leading to very specific molecular signature is key phenomena for this subject. Perhaps the most common form uh, or most famous example for supramolecular chemistry is the DNA. Here we have two separate strands of peptides which are connected by weak hydrogen bonds. It's not a surprise that biology both provides the motivation and inspiration to supramolecular chemistry. However, our candidate's work uh, is more related to uh, using supramolecular chemistry to synthesize new materials with potentially great applications. Dr. Ajay Ghosh has done brilliant work in advancing the field of supramolecular chemistry especially in the design and synthesis of molecular assemblies 
called pie gels, a new class of materials formed out of organic pie systems with great potential for photonic and electronic applications. So let me give an example. Because as I was saying that you have this uh, large structure and they have very specific molecular signature, one of the applications you, uh, that comes out from Dr. Ajay Ghosh's work is to recognize very minute traces of specific chemicals. So in particular, his technique allows you to sense one femtogram of, for example, let's say TNT. Okay, so as the TNT molecules come in, in contact with the structure that you designed, um, and these weak bonds start linking up, you get some fluorescence. So, uh, as you can well imagine, this is a very useful application. Um, really, the more outstanding application would be is, as, for example, let's say you're getting cancer, you start producing some very trace elements of, new, of uh, the indication of cancer setting in. So you can well imagine in the future going uh, to a clinic, breathing into one of these things, and if it lights up, well, it's bad news, and then maybe you should do something about it. If not, it's fine. It's a very inexpensive thing to do. But let's come back to the TNT example. Just uh, in the afternoon, uh, the police were here with uh, you know, metal detectors and bomb detectors, and there's a dog, which actually uh, was a police dog. It had a nice little uh, woolen sweater and going around sniffing, very friendly dog. And uh, we know the dogs are, you know, they have very sensitive nose for us if you train them. So Professor, uh, Dr. Ajay Ghosh's work, unfortunately, will make this dog's work go away. So I did whisper to the dog, you should uh, go bite this man, but it was a very nice dog, didn't do that. My biggest worry about this sort of work is I, whenever I come to India and my mother makes some masala, some uh, sambar powder, and I go back, I never declare that because it's too much hassle and, you know, and the dogs don't smell it anyway. But I can well imagine application of this supramolecular chemistry would make it difficult for me to do such cross-border transactions. <laughs> uh, let me conclude by saying that um, uh, our, uh, like all panels, we take great pride uh, in all of our laureates. Uh, it's a lot of hard work, and then it's very rewarding to uh, recognize and celebrate uh, very creative people. Uh, but uh, we take uh, even more pride in this year's winner because he's absolutely indigenous. I grew up in Kerala, school, high uh, school, college, university, and work all in Kerala, and uh, uh, is an example. I'm not saying, therefore, everyone should emulate this or something, but it's an example where if you are bright with proper encouragement, uh, you can really achieve world-class research. Congratulations, Dr. Ajay Ghosh. The Infosys Prize in Physical Sciences, Professor Ayan Panpile Ajay Ghosh. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, a very good evening to all of you. In fact, this is a a great moment in the life of an ordinary village man turned chemist and research, researcher like me. I'm very delighted and feel honored and motivated by bestowing this most prestigious prize of India today, the Infosys Prize in the field of uh, physical sciences. And also I'm very glad to carry this prize from New Delhi all the way to the southernmost corner of India. I hope this prize will encourage and motivate many young scientists and students of this country to take up more challenging work and contribute to the cause of the people of this country. I should thank a lot of people 
for making me to achieve this milestone in my life. Firstly, it is my students and co-workers and collaborators who work hard for me. So at this point of time, what I would like to say is that my dear students, co-workers, and collaborators, you really made it for me. And I thank you all sincerely from the bottom of my heart for giving me this great honor. I should also thank all my colleagues at the National Institute of Science and Technology in Trivandrum, and also my parent organization, CSIR. I should also thank uh, the people who have nominated me for this prize, Dr. Pushvido Ghosh, of the director of the CSMCRI at Bhavnagar, and Professor Samir K. Bemirjari, the director general of CSIR. And this award means to me that I have to start a new journey from here. And as I said earlier, it gives me a lot of responsibility to take up more challenging work and work more harder and harder. I thank all the jury members and the jury chair for patting me and encouraging me to go forward in science and in my life. I should also thank my family members, particularly my parents who struggled really hard to educate me, and my wife, Ambali, and my two sons, Anantakrishnan and Anantaraman, for standing all the time with me and encouraging me and supporting me. I don't want to talk anything more or anything more about my work, because Professor Kulkarni has done an excellent job even though he is not a chemist, he has proved that he can be a chemist also. So he has beautifully narrated it, making my job very easy. Ladies and gentlemen, I thank you, each and every one of you, for being with me to, to participate in this program and encouraging me. So thank you all. Thank you.